This What's Working with Cam Marston podcast is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of What's Working. I'm Kim Marston. What's Working is the show designed to bring you the workplace, the workforce, and the marketplace trends that are changing the workplace, workforce, and marketplace around you. I try to find the guests that have a unique angle on the trends that are shaping their business, get them on the phone, interview them in person, and somehow learn for them how they've reacted to or responded to or are doing their best to master the trends. We have to, as business people, uh, acknowledge the trends that are shaping our industry. How are these people doing it? And maybe there's some insight that we can gain from them that we can adopt for our own business with the goal of making you just a little bit better at what it is that you do. In this pursuit of trends, I really enjoy finding the people that have seen a market niche that was not being exploited. And the guy that I'm going to interview today has done that in a remarkable, remarkable way. Usually I hold the guest's name back until I get him on the phone. Today we're not going to do that. My guest today is Josh Reed. He's the vice president of sales and co-founder of Marilina Outdoor. And I'm going to get into his bio when I get him on the phone here in just a little while. But you know his work, particularly those here in the Deep South in Mobile, Alabama, in the fishing gear called Hook, spelled H-U-K. Josh tells a wonderful story about finding a market niche with the employer that he was working for at the time, and they wouldn't take a look. So he took it on his own. And his growth has been remarkable as they've dominated this market niche. Then he's got a great story. I should just go ahead and get him on. He's got a great story of what the pandemic did to them and how they reinvented their business to make it stronger. I met him at a conference not long ago. He was one of the closing presenters and he had the room captured with his story. And uh, it's remarkable. The Instagram world that company has created, that's going to be a part of our interview. Josh Reed is a new hero of mine. I heard him tell his story at a conference not long ago, what he saw, what he did to capture what he saw, and how it has exploded underneath him and his partners in this business is the focus of this week's show. You're going to love this, folks. You're going to love my man, Josh Reed, when we get him on the phone. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. We'll be back right after this break. At Spring Hill Toyota, it's just that easy. From our three-day exchange to free car washes, the benefits of the Spring Hill Advantage make the choice easy to see. We make it easy to own. Every vehicle comes with Toyota Care, plus our no-cost maintenance plan with free tire rotations and oil changes for four years. Get peace of mind with free roadside assistance 24-7. And don't forget, it's easy to buy your car 100% online. Visit SpringHillToyota.com today. It's just that easy. I'm David Nelson, brewmaster and owner of Braided River Brewing. We want beer that goes along no matter where the adventure takes us and that doesn't make us choose between great beer and drinkability. We're drawn to the Delta and united by beer because to us, the best way to celebrate the Delta is to slow down and savor the moments and the beer together. Come visit our tap room in downtown Mobile and ask for us at your favorite bar or restaurant. Visit online at braidedriverbrewing.com. 
When you make the right decision, it feels good, like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. I'm State Farm Agent Allison Horner, and that's why I'm right here in Mobile to help you select the right protection at the right price. I'll make sure you understand your State Farm coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens. With me as your State Farm agent, it's easy to make the right choice. You can come by, call, or click allisonhorner.com. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston, and on the line with me is a celebrity superhero superstar in the world of outdoor gear, a guy that I'm lucky to know. Met him a few weeks ago, and his story, folks, like I said in the opening comments, is going to be good. Josh Reed is the vice president of sales and co-founder of Marilina, the parent company for the fishing and hunting apparel brands Hook and Nomad. And Josh, I'm going to get into your bio as we go along here, uh, some drop some different things that are written on this paper. But first and foremost, thank you so much. Welcome to What's Working. Well, thank you for having me. As always, we always like to tell the story, and uh, we appreciate you. Let me be a part of this. So I first stepped into this gym that I, and I don't know that I told you this when we were together. I first stepped into this gym that I belong to. And this guy that was kind of one of the quasi leaders of the gym always had this, um, this shirt on with this big H U K logo on the front. And I finally asked him about (laughs) it and he said, it's a, I wear it to work out, but this is fishing apparel. And this was about four or five years ago, I guess. And I said, huh, that's cool. I like the look of that. And since then, Josh, I see that stuff everywhere. I see it every day. And the success that you guys have had with your hook brand uh, and the others as well, we'll get into those, is just phenomenal. And I want you, if you will, tell us the story of when you saw the market opportunity to develop this apparel. Yeah, so, you know, we're fortunate. I work with a, a great crew in my past life, um, I was up in Baltimore, um, and was introduced to a a great, great, great crowd of people. Um, basically a team, if you want to call it, um, at Under Armour and, you know, throughout the whole process, I was there from 2007 till about 2014. And, you know, the relationships that you build on a day-to-day basis, working with people, it's more like your family. You got a family at home, but you also have a family in the office. And, uh, you know, as you continue to build those relationships throughout the years, you know, your working family is pretty much around them all the time. So, um, you know, this whole concept with the with the brand was established there. You know, we looked at opportunities um, as we move forward and how the brand really came about was um, we saw opportunity where we weren't getting fulfilled at our prior um, employer. And, uh, you know, we wanted to do fishing 12 months out of the year. And we talked to retailers, we talked to basic consumers. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest segments within the fishing world is not just offshore fishing, but you got the whole middle of America that is freshwater. Yeah. And, you know, we, we looked at that and said, okay, you have Bassmasters, you have, you know, at the time MLF, FLW, you have all these different campaigns and tournament series that we can go after. And, uh, that's how we really came about deciding, you know, I talked to one of my business partners and, uh, and he basically said, well, I like to try to pursue this. I said, we'll put a business plan together. And, you know, within that business plan, that's how we came about with, with hook, um, nomad, which is a brand we'll talk about later on, um, didn't come about to fruition until later. However, it was in the works in our minds. Um, so, you know, that was one of the things that, you know, with the team that we were surrounded with, with planning, with marketing, with retail marketing, you know, you have to figure out how you can take it to market. And there's so many great brands out there. And every year they come out, they launch and they flop. And the biggest problem is they don't have distribution. Um, and, you know, from my background, I carried, I carried the big box weight, um, the key account side. And my other um, co-founder, Jason Hart, um, he called on the independent side of the business. So between the both of us, we had the relationships, um, and that's the key word, relationship, to be able to go into and get something out to market. Um, That was one of our biggest things with myself, with the key accounts, is, you know, they can swing a big stick really quick. 
Um, they got a lot of doors. They can create a lot of POs for you um, and really get you established. But in the same note, just willing, are they willing to take a risk? Yeah. And with the treatment um, that I gave them, the treatment that Hart gave his dealers on the independent side, you know, they were willing to invest in us in the people. Yeah. And that's what they believed in. So your product is available today. I'm reading again from the bio here, Dick's Sporting Goods, Cabela, Bass Pro Shops. Those are three pretty big locations, right? Those are pretty big. Yep. Those orders matter to a guy like you. And, they definitely do. And I think it's interesting that while you were at your previous employer, Under Armour, you saw the opportunity and uh, they didn't want to pursue it. Is that right? Well, it's it's not that they didn't want to pursue it. Um, I would say, um, in the big, if you know, you take it up the ladder, they probably would have wanted to pursue it. But in the same note, at that time within our division, the outdoor division, we were a small portion of the main cog, if you want to say. Sure. And you know, they're sourcing with fabrics and factories and everything else. Um, and you know, you try to keep those lines running full steam ahead. And you know, when we were at at that position, fishing was a six month deal. When it came down to after July, we started focusing on hunting, which was a bigger portion of the business. And that's where we saw the opportunity. We saw the opportunity to offer the customer, the consumer, something 12 months out of the year. And, you know, that was one thing that year over year over year, we kept on going these, these uh, line reviews and it just didn't never, it never came about. It never came to fruition. And that's what gave us the idea of saying, let's take the chance, let's roll the dice, and let's make this happen. One of the things the show is designed to reveal is the trends that are shaping the marketplace. And we'll talk about current trends but uh, in a little bit. But you saw an opportunity to benefit from a trend of, let's say, fishing 12 months out of the year, whereas previously the paradigm was fishing is a six-month thing. After that, it's hunting. What gave you the insight that fishing was a 12 month out of the year opportunity? Well, you know, you can fish anywhere. You know, you can only hunt. Hunt has hunting has regulations, meaning you can't hunt all the time. Seasons come in and go um, and go away. And with fishing, somebody can get on a boat. They can go to a pond. They can go to a lake, go to a river and they can fish where the best of the best fish. As long as they know where the coordinates are or they have an idea of where somebody fishes, you know, they can do that 12 months out of the year. And, you know, you, you look at it, you have people who who saltwater fish along the Gulf. They do it on the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic, all the way up to Maine. Um, and then, you know, California is the same way. People are always fishing. They're, you, you look at um, you look at people in, in the wintertime in the past past last year you know, ice fishing wasn't that, wasn't that strong because the lakes didn't freeze hard enough. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, somebody can fish 12 months out of the year and it can be in here in America or they can go somewhere else. I mean, it's always warm down, <laughs> down in, uh, you know, the islands. Sure. So, yeah, it's always warm down in Costa Rica and the fish are always good and the shelf is not too far off the coast. These are that's, things that's I've, correct. I've heard my fishing friends talk about, my deep sea friends, uh, fishing friends talk about. Another one of the things that you told me about, and I want to emphasize, is the price point of your materials. These fishermen had been, and, and, and perhaps I've got this story wrong, Josh. I want you to correct me if I did. But the thought was they're not going to spend money on clothes. They need a T-shirt. And you want to sell them a $55 uh, act piece of activewear. <laughs> These guys are going to spend all the money on beer and ice chests. They're not going to spend money on clothes. And yeah. you said, no, you're wrong. They are. Yeah. And they have. Yes. Yeah. If, if, if you look at it, um, you know, guys who have the big sport fishers or have nice center consoles. Yes, they spend the money on nice tackle, on the nice rig. Um, you look the same way with freshwater. Um they do the same thing. They have a nice bass boat. They have a nice truck um, to carry everything around. Um, but people are willing to spend the money on the gear. When we started, we, we thought we were going to sell a lot of T-shirts, a lot of graphic tees. And by coming out with the performance and offering that as well, we caught on really quickly that the consumer wanted a long sleeve performance shirt. And they wanted good quality. They wanted something that was different and unique that was in the marketplace. And when it comes down to design, that's where the key to having good designers is, you know, what's the aesthetic? Everybody can knock somebody off. 
um, over time. But what's the aesthetic that can tell a story? And, you know, our first shirt was a 9010 poly spandex body shirt that had a mesh background, you know, basically a, a mesh back. And that was like a air conditioner. It was an open window in the back. You didn't get sun. It still had sun protection and the sun wasn't going to harm you on your, on your lower back below your kidneys uh, around your kidneys. But um, they were willing to spend 50 bucks to 55 bucks on a performance shirt. And we learned that really quick. And so we pivoted with planning to make sure that's what we developed. And that's the story we told. And you had a warehouse full of tees, graphic tees at some point, somehow, and they gradually, <laughs> we, we sure ev- did. eventually we you sold them through. <laughs> yeah, we depleted them. Yeah, that's good. So it's a, it's a story of seeing an opportunity, acting on an opportunity. Let me ask you this. Were you ever scared? Um, no, not really. When you're surrounded by great people. I mean, when we started the company and we started hiring people on, you know, some of these people I haven't worked for or worked with for six months. Um, and, you know, going into a meeting, a, a, a big box presentation, key account presentation, and everybody having all everything pulled together, you know, we didn't do a dry run. We didn't do any of that stuff. It's basically all we did was hang a shingle, a new shingle on the door. Um, and when you surround yourself with great people and talented people, you know, you don't really get concerned about your future. Um, because, you know, everybody's there to prop each other up. Um, and, you know, when we started, we had we had good investors and, you know, we had a great marketing campaign. We had great product and we had a great team. So, um, you know, when you combine all those together, you know, yes, there is some some worries here and there of getting product in town to be able to deliver it on time um, or making sure that the future of what you're designing and developing is, is staying on cadence. Um, but all those things can be mitigated if you want to say if you keep it on calendar and that's with any business every you know i'm building a cog here and you know at the end of the day you're looking at that if you stay on task and you stay on calendar and everybody upholds to that and carries their own weight you don't have anything to worry about i love the story i still think i I still feel I, you sound like a risk taker. I've met you. You don't embody well, that's a, that's a, that's the role the entrepreneur of, spirit. Yeah. That's the entrepreneur spirit. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, it's I, not for everybody. I, um, but it's been seven years now. And one of the things that uh, that you guys first started, if I'm doing my math correctly, and if this is, if I'm reading this right, began in 2014. Um, yep. So you guys started and you've used the word family and team uh, a number of times. After seven years, does it still feel that way? Or have you grown to a position where, you know, I remember back in the days in 2016 and 2018 when it was a family. You, you will always, it's sort of like your your first love. You, you always remember where it started. Um, yes, we evolved. We've had people come and go. Um, and, you know, the team we have now, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of them and proud to be a part of this group. Um, but, you know, you always remember those who you founded something with, yeah. and they always will be special. When we come back from break, I want to talk to you about your customer and what we know about him or her and what you've done to get in front of him or her. First, you got to get distribution. You can't sell it unless you're in Dick's and Cabela's and Bass Pro and all these other places. But at some point, that customer comes through the door and sees it and likes it. And I want to know what you've learned about your customer. We'll talk about that when we get back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. On the line, Josh Reed, president of sales, hook and nomad hunting and fishing apparel. I'm David Nelson, brewmaster and owner of Braided River Brewing. We want beer that goes along no matter where the adventure takes us and that doesn't make us choose between great beer and drinkability. We're drawn to the Delta and united by beer because to us, the best way to celebrate the Delta is to slow down and savor the moments and the beer together. Come visit our tap room in downtown Mobile and ask for us at your favorite bar or restaurant. Visit online at braidedriverbrewing.com. It's Cam again with another strategic planning tip. When you begin the strategic planning process with your team, it's a good idea to write down what your age will be when the strategic plan is fulfilled. 
Me, I'm a fan of a 10-year planning process, so I have people write down their age in 10 years in big numbers at the top of their page. I ask them to write down who they'll be financially supporting in 10 years and who else living in their household will be earning a living in 10 years. This usually gets some chuckles, but it grounds people into reality. I then ask what they'd like their work schedule to be like. I want participants invested in the discussion and in implementing the plan once it's complete. And these tactics usually do the trick. Want help with your strategic planning? Search for Cam Marston online and drop me an email. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. Online with me is Josh Reed. He is the Vice President of Sales for Hook and Nomad Hunting and Fishing Apparel. I may have said President prior to the break. He's the Vice President of of, of Sales. Josh, you got to know a lot about your customer. First, you've got to know the process. You've got to know the product. You've got to know how to get in front of the, the, the people who are going to sell your product. But ultimately, like we said prior to the break, the customer is going to come through the door of Dick's Sporting Goods, and they're going to see your product on a hanger or on a shelf, and they're going to walk up and touch it. And you've got to know something about him or her in order to make them want to pull the trigger. All the demographic data is important, but tell me what you did to get to know who he or she is. Yeah, so, you know, it really came down to experience. You know, I grew up in South Carolina um, at an early age, was exposed to what I call the swamp. Um, You know, it's a bunch of low low country down here in South Carolina. And, you know, growing up fishing and and catching catfish to, you know, garfish, sometimes you don't want them. But, you know, you catch some brim and molly and, you know, those aspects of growing up in uh, in the country, it really helped define me as a person. You know, I really love the land and really understand what it really, what it takes and what it is to live kind of that lifestyle. Um, and that's what we're selling to. We're selling to a consumer that is passionate about the outdoors. They're conservationists for the first and foremost, you know, hunters and fishermen, they want to protect the environment. They want to protect their surroundings because they want to be able to teach their children, their grandchildren, and and so on and so forth. So, you know, understanding who that person is and who that demographic is, is so vital to have a successful business. And it doesn't matter what business you're in. You got to know who you're selling to. So, you know, well, first, um, you know, I have a degree in horticulture. Go figure. Um, That has nothing to do with, um, you know, making synthetic T-shirts and underwear by any means. But, you know, at an early age, having that background and then getting exposed into sales um, at an early age and then getting exposed to the environment up in Baltimore, you know, you really understand the model, whether it's athletic function or if it's just leisure. Um, You know, a lot of people these days, yes, they, they don't, they can't go fish. They can't go hunting, but they have that aspirational um, portion of it um, that they're looking to do. So, you know, when we really thought about building this business, um, it was taking that concept of focusing on what would the person want next? You know, we have these companies like Trunk Club and, you know, all these different, you know, box, fishing box and everything else that come out. You know, people want the next shiny thing. And we're, we're consumers as humans. We like to consume things. So what's the best what is it going to take for that to be purchased? And that's how we developed the line. Um, we took a lot of thought and process of saying, okay, what 20% is going to drop 80% of our business Yeah, and really focusing on that in the beginning. Of course, yes, we made some mishaps and things didn't sell like the teas, Yeah, but you know, for the most part, that 20% that drove the business took us in, in to where we are today. So it, it was a foundation. Has your customer changed since you began? The customer has changed. Um, You know, we still are focused on our grassroots core consumer. Um, You know, with with the COVID situation, more and more people 
are, are getting outdoors. Um, we have people who are doing kayaking, paddle sports. Um, they're looking for sun protection. They're looking for something that's outside that, you know, to protect them from the elements. Um, and that's what we give them. So that customer, you know, the everyday beach goer um, that would love to pick up a rod, he's at the beach and you see somebody surf fishing uh, or riding around in a boat going to the back of the creek. They see those products, um, the hook product that we, we've developed, and they're like, that looks pretty cool. I'd like to have one of those. So when the consumer goes into the, into the you know, independent retailer or in one of the key accounts, um, they have, they have a, a wide option of different products for them to buy. So um, it's, been, it's been really exciting and uh, very important that we stay on trend and that we continue to develop something that is that shiny shiny penny if you want to say sure um that that keeps the eye um when when people go into the retailer so it's interesting that you said the the hook gear is sold and i'm and i'm using different words than what you used through kind of social awareness people see someone else in it uh they see a guy on a fancy fishing boat wearing hook gear and they say well i can't afford the boat but i can sure get a shirt or something like that so it's aspirational exactly as you went into hunting gear which is traditionally a solitary sport was there same the same aspirational uh sale in the nomad gear or was it a, a did you have to take it differently it's a, it's a little bit different market. Um, when we launched Nomad, um, the market was saturated. Um, the competition uh, from private label down to other brands is a pretty stagnant marketplace. Um, you know, we tried to take, you know, we use a lot of the same silhouettes and a lot of the same fabrics um, on both brands. But we knew we had to offer something as far as technology that was a little bit more up and coming than what the competition had. And so, um, you know, that, that brand itself, you know, we, we had to think outside the box. We had to develop, we, we developed big game line because everybody's in light tail. So, you know, the big game line helped us get more and more established in that marketplace out West. Um, but you also have that, that consumer who is aspirational and some of the camos that are produced these days, they're not all stick and leaf. So, you know, some of it might be digitized. Um, and so people can wear that around a campfire. They can wear that to church. They can wear, you know, every day when they're going up and down the road to work. Um, so it's more of how can we take it that it's a functional hunting piece, but it also can be wear, worn as an everyday gear. So you took, uh, you took the hunting gear and made it I, I'm looking for a term here. I mean, you made it into casual wear versus purely, purely sports specific. Sports specific. Exactly. You know, the guy can wear it in the woods or the gal can wear it in the woods. Um, however, they can wear it, you know, as an everyday piece if they like. Now, I know you're going into duck hunting, which is a group of psycho people who, uh, <laughs> if they think that a piece of camo is going to get the ducks closer or whatever, uh, they're going to spend it. They're uh, on par to me with turkey hunters who are as exactly psycho, right. who are on, <laughs> all on par with golfers who, uh, yep. you know, anything they can do to reduce their score by one or two strokes, it's worth the extraordinary investment to do so. Turkey hunters, I need to get that turkey two or three steps closer to get a better shot. Duck hunters, yep. I need to be still or I need to look more like the water or the, 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 the surroundings. Talk to yeah. me about your approach into turkey and duck gear. Yeah, so um, I have to give all credit to um, my other partner, Jason Hart, on this one. Um, he is a avid hunter, and when it comes down to turkey hunting, his um, he did a wrote a piece um, probably back in 2016 where we got interviewed, and you know his aspiration in life was to be a turkey biologist. Can you think of that? A turkey but, biologist. You know, a turkey biologist. Yeah. So, you know, from an early age, he had a love and passion for turkey hunting. Um, it, hunting uh, in general, but turkey hunting specifically. And, you know, when you start thinking about these things and you start developing product, um, he's the one that came up with the name Nomad. Um, you know, he travels everywhere and he's never home. He, he grew up here in Somerville, South Carolina. And he was, he's never there. Um, he's always on the road. He's always hanging out with buddies and friends, people in the industry, which is, they're, they're, it's a family. 
um, turkey hunters, they are a family, their own forums. Um, same with duck hunters. And he has been a, a very in, influential person into that space in this company. And so when it comes down to product development, he is thinking about this all all the time, all the time. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that different organizations want him to be a part of it. Um, they're, they're, they're every day, you know, talking and walking because he is so authentic in that space. And he's the one who's, you know, created and, you know, brought some things back to life. I mean, you know, if you look at history and fashion and everything else, Things go in cycles, yeah. you know, platform shoes, all that kind of bell bottoms, everything goes through a cycle. And, you know, when it comes down to turkey hunting, there were some great products out there 20, 30 years ago, and he remembers them. And he's like, well, why don't, you know, those, those items have disappeared and they're no longer available. Why don't we incorporate these features to these pieces, this gear, the garment or, you know, a turkey vest? why don't we incorporate this to make our product better and stand out um, against the competition? So when you live it and breathe it and you're authentic, um, nobody really can touch you. (laughs) So uh, I have to give him credit for all that. So it's the same way with the duck hunting side, you know, duck hunter wants something that's comfortable. It's going to keep them warm. It's going to keep them dry. And, you know, they're out there hanging out with their buddies. And when they're out in the elements, they can't afford to get wet. Um, or get become miserable. So he's thought through this with another person or another product um, developer is Devin Sweeney. Um, they take it to heart and uh, really put a lot of thought and process into everything that we develop. The, I duck hunted several weeks ago now. The season is long closed, but the last weekend of the season was youth weekend. Uh, I got out there with my son and my buddy and his son and um, – It was a bust, but I can sure see the need for quality gear because everything I had was borrowed and loaned. (laughs) None of it fit real well. And uh, I can see the need for the gear and I can see how uh, a good duck hunt would be intoxicating for people. It's just beautiful to see. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I grew up doing it. I grew up hunting in timber. Yeah. And uh, my dad put me in some spots when I was younger and I was freezing to death. And that was when cotton. Um, was was a big deal, but I don't, really, if you layer up with all that stuff, it really didn't keep you that warm. Yeah, yeah, I, I I can see the need for for the the new technology in that gear. So is the is the the duck hunting gear is not available yet? Do I understand that correctly? No, no. The the we, we, for twenty one, we developed a new turkey line. So everything in, is new for twenty one in the turkey turkey line, um, and it's it's already up on the site and now that retailers. Um, that that carry the Nomad brand, yeah. And then fall twenty one is when we're launching the the waterfowl portion of it. Yeah. So you know, Jace has been traveling, I um, mean, nonstop for probably about two months straight, and going around with our our uh, reps in the territories and hitting every dealer possible. And that's been one of the shining stars uh, in the Nomad line for. For 21 yeah. for fall. Well, good for him. I bet he was just chomping at the bit to get at this stuff. Oh. You guys are doing a good job <laughs> yeah. with the hook gear, and he's going, when are we going to let me run on the turkey stuff? When am I going to get my exactly chance? Right. That is exactly right. When we come back from break, let's talk a little bit more about the... Uh, you, you've got a great social media story to tell, and the word is authenticity. And you've mentioned that with your buddy, Jason, that everybody, he has nothing to hide. He's exactly what he is. But that's the same characteristic of the brand since you've begun is what you've told me and what I've seen on social media. And I think there's a story there for my listeners. And there's certainly a story there for me as I continue to try to build my own brand. And I I think it's just fascinating. So when we come back, let's pick up there, folks. I'm on the line with Josh Reed, the vice president, sales co-founder of Marilina Outdoor. You may not have heard of that, but you've probably heard of Hook and maybe you've seen Nomad. And it's a great story to tell. We'll be right back. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, 
Today, Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. It's Cam again. Each Friday, my three-minute commentaries called Keeping It Real are broadcast on Alabama Public Radio at 7.45 a.m. and 4.45 p.m. For three years, I've shared my thoughts and insights on the world and on life as I watch it go on around me. They've won a few statewide and national awards, and I really enjoy them. My goal for the commentaries? I simply want them to make you nod at something that you recognize or smile or maybe chuckle to yourself. Our world faces a shortage of good intentions these days, and my Keeping It Real commentaries are my effort to help fill this void. Search for Keeping It Real with Cam Marston in your Facebook search bar or on your favorite podcast app. And I hope you enjoy them. At Spring Hill Toyota, it's just that easy. From our three-day exchange to free car washes, the benefits of the Spring Hill Advantage make the choice easy to see. We make it easy to own. Every vehicle comes with Toyota Care, plus our no-cost maintenance plan with free tire rotations and oil changes for four years. Get peace of mind with free roadside assistance 24-7. And don't forget, it's easy to buy your car 100% online. Visit SpringHillToyota.com today. It's just that easy. We're back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. On the line with me, Josh Reed, Vice President, Sales Co-Founder of Marilina Outdoor. You know the brands, Hook and Nomad. If you live in this part of the world, the Deep South, the Gulf Coast, you see that Hook brand nearly everywhere. It seems to be that the kids around my part of town, uh, at least in the places where we launch our boat, that hook brand is what they want to wear. And uh, when I came home with a hook hat not long ago, I had to announce to the family, this is off limits to you people. This is dad's <laughs> hat. So I've, 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 I've got it un- under lockdown, Josh. You'll be happy to hear that. Now, let me share a number with you. 375,000. Do you know what that refers to? That's probably social media followers. That is your Instagram followers, 375,000. Now, there certainly are people who have more, but that's a big O number, a real big number. And it seems to me, and this is a conversation we have a lot on this show when it comes to retail, that social media has become critical to sales. Is that your case? Um, Yes, it it, it definitely helps drive the business. Um, You know, staying in front of that, um, because if you look at it, people can't stay away from their phones or constantly touching it, looking at it. Um, that has been a important portion of our business. And when we started the company, you know, marketing was a key feature, um, telling a great story out of the gate and how can we bring that to market and make sure that people were, you know, intrigued with what we were doing. And so when we first started hook, you know, where we organically gained these, these followers, it, it came down to, through an authentic piece, if you want to say, um, you know, people resonated with it because it is true and is real. We were living it. We were telling the story. Um, you know, we, we, when we first launched, we, we had a show, it's called Money Fish. Um, and it was basically a bunch of knuckleheads who started a company and trying to win tournaments and we stunk. We were terrible. Um, but that led into the social play that people started following more and more. And we were able to take that information with all the digital assets, with all the video, um, and actually apply that to capture, you know, the individual's attention. You know, you have so much time, it's just like talking to a farmer or anything else when you, you're trying to sell them something. You have, you basically have 30 seconds to capture that person's attention. And so by building a great platform, um, we had a, a team of, of, uh, of coworkers, Drew Hummer led up the team and uh, he basically built a great website and built, built a great social media platform for us, you know, and is still driving it today. So the, the much of the social media that I see when I go to the hook Instagram page, there are in some cases, let's face it, beautiful pictures of people, beautiful pictures of beautiful people catching fish. There are also some pictures of people like me, catching fish is your social media driven by 
your, you know, your professional photographers or are you, do you let, you know, other people on there? Other, other people submit pictures all the time. They're sending emails left and right and showing, you know, what they're doing. We, we actually put things out, you know, send us your photos. Um, and usually if we use them, a lot of times we'll send the cus- the person some, some gear and tell them thank you for, for sharing their personal experience. Because when it comes down to it, they're being authentic as well. Yeah. Um, and that's the platform that we want to stay on. Um, you know, we, we worked a lot with our prof- professional anglers when we first started. And that helped get the craze, especially in the bass fishing world. Um, we had a lot of boat captains that were, you know, authentic in the offshore space. Um, they do exceptionally well year over year in tournaments. And we, what we did is we said, we're not the experts in the field day to day. You are, you know, help us tell the story. And so we gained all that information in the beginning from those talented individuals and share that, that wealth of, um, if you want to say, um, knowledge to, you know, people, they're influencers. So we were just sharing that, that platform. Um, over time, it's become, you know, everyday families, everyday people going to the beach or, you know, they might be fishing with their kid and catch a nice redfish or catch a nice bass. Um, and we, it really started trickling down as we started sponsoring some of these youth tournaments um, in the marketplace. And that continued to drive that social, if you want to say influence, influences on the social side to really gain more customers and more followers to be a part of the brand. You know, when we launch something new, you know, we can put it on the website, but you know, we take a picture of somebody or somebody takes a picture of they just bought the shirt and they love it. You know, that's, that's like, it's not a true editorial. Right. That is an end user telling their, their story and how that gear helped them or made them happy. Um, and so that's been a key component for us as a company overall um, you know, to help us grow. Tell me about everybody's got a pandemic story and I want to hear yours. And uh, now we're in, as we record this, we're coming up on March of 2021. Uh, and it was about a year ago that things were, things were in my world one year ago, things were moving fine. So we were right on the precipice that we didn't know existed about one year ago. <laughs> What's your pandemic yeah. story? Yeah. So, uh, you know, January, February, we're shipping new goods to our consumers, um, all of them, independent, big box. Um, and, you know, then the pandemic hits. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, is everybody going to be OK? And then second, you start thinking about business um, and you start saying, OK, are people going to start canceling goods if customers aren't coming into the door? Um, yeah, we experienced some cancellations, but what that allowed us to do, um, is it allowed us that product that was canceled, allowed us to continue to tell our story through a social media platform. It kept the customer engaged and, you know, we actually increased, you know, our followers, our followers, because we started picking up customers that have never experienced the brand in their, their life. If we didn't have that product, we wouldn't have had anything to sell them. So through the whole pandemic with cancellations, you know, uh, it allowed us to tell the story the 12 months out of the year. And uh, the social media platform through the phone, whether it was through, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, um, it drove people to our direct consumer site, as well as, you know, telling the story. So if they did go shopping um, in, a, in a retailer, they saw our apparel on the floor. Um, and it allowed us to connect, you know, intimately with that consumer that has really never heard of who, what Hook or Nomad was. So you were reaching directly to the consumer in the pandemic yep. time versus yep. needing and relying on the middleman, the big boxes, the independent retailers, et cetera. Yep. And you made that connection and you made, if I understand you correctly, a lot of sales off your website directly to the consumer, which would I would think is a higher profitability. It, it is. It definitely is. You know, our key component is to really, you know, we want to be in grassroots. We want to drive business through our retailers. Yeah. That is first and foremost, you know, that's, you know, we can't connect in small, we can't connect in small towns in rural areas across America. And it's important is for us to have that distribution without that distribution. We wouldn't be where we are today. Um, yes, we have to, 
the direct consumer portion is to be able to market and tell our story the way it should be told. And that's the beauty of, of the website. Yeah. So it was allowed us to continue to tell the story and tell the development of where we're heading. But it also, you know, we were not forgetting about our, our customers. We had customers calling and said, we, we need more, we need more. And of course we shipped it to them if we had availability. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you working on now? What is, uh, we got just a few more minutes left in the show. What's on your, yeah. what's on your, what's a day in the life of Josh Reed look like today? Well, currently we're, we're still in our, in the works of booking out our fall winter 21 line. Um, and that will come ahead, uh, to head probably here in the next month and a half or two. Um, and then, uh, you know, we've already started working on spring 22 and that's about to close in that we are going to have, you know, samples coming in, um, for our, our sales meetings, um, and to be able to take that to market around June 1st. Um, to all our retailers across America and outside the United States. June 1st, 2022 is what we're talking about here. We're talking about that would, we will start, no, we will be uh, showing that product to our dealers June June 1st of 21 okay. for 22. Uh, for 22. So that product, yeah. So that product will start shipping January 1 of 22. I see. And is everything, every product line, you live in the future. So I, I'm looking at your website we here. Uh, I've been kind of perusing it uh, this afternoon in anticipation of this call. And there's new arrivals on here. These new arrivals are only new to me, right? These are not new to you. That, that's correct. They're not new to me. I've been looking at them for a long time. So, you know, they're they're launching. We're excited about it. Well, we have, you know, a ton of newness in the line. Um, you know, 21 was, I, I think we only had two carryover styles in 21. Um, and when we go into spring 22, everything's brand new on the hook side. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's one of those things that you always have to stay innovative and stay ahead of the curve in development. And that was one thing with our team We're you know, we got a tight team, um, but we continue to work during the COVID, um, crisis and, you know, really develop something great. And, uh, as I stand here and, and talk about this. We have we have people in the office right now, still you know cranking away, getting tech packs and getting everything they need to the factories in order for us to deliver the samples on time for the reps to be able to go sell for spring twenty two. It's amazing to me how far in advance that you work. How many SKUs would you guess that you have? Oh gosh, uh, just a lot. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, you think about you think about one style has you know a small through three X, and then multiply it by four or five colors and then multiply that times probably 20, 20 different, probably about 30, 35 different shirts. Yeah. And then you do the same for bottoms. We'll probably have 10 different, 10 different bottom styles and you multiply that by five different colors and sizes. So it adds up pretty quick. It sure does. I can see that. Is there a fabric on the future, on the horizon that you're monitoring that some some interesting, you know, textile company has got something that they're working on that you've got a sniff of that you said, hey, when this is ready, we want to see it. Yeah, there's there's always factors that we're working with that are bringing those things to the table for us. You know, we're always looking for something that's going to be comfortable for the consumer to wear. You know, two way stretch, trying to increase that. Can we get four way stretch in that fabric? Can will it will it lay right on the body when it's is, when you're wearing it? You know, we're always thinking about those those little details and trying to bring something, you know, a, a nice quality garment um, to market. And that's first and foremost is is delivering something that if you look at the price is, is it should be priced higher. Um, but for the value of what we're delivering, it's just a, it's just amazing gear. Yeah. And how long do you think have you ever studied how long someone would keep one of these shirts? So right now I'm looking at a hooked up refraction camo t do you look at that and say all right that's going to have a shelf life of 18 months six months uh, that usually people 18 months would be about right um they'll wear that thing out um and so it'll get stains or get a hole in it to that at that point but you know most you know, I've, I've seen people <laughs> wearing some of our initial stuff that we we designed and we launched in 2015 and i see that as a relic um but you know they're still wearing it and it still looks good. So it really comes down to how the 
the customer takes care of their products, what they're, how they wash it. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, how they take care of their, their wardrobe. Well, my hook hat is beautiful, but it will be authentic when it has some fish blood on it. And I, go. I plan to kind of start remedying that when it warms up a little bit more around here to get it really broken in. It needs to have some scales in it. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of slime. We'll have to get you, uh, a few more so that you can you can have one to wear out on well, the town, but also one to wear you know on the boat. Or, or you could sell them pre-slimed. Hey, here's a new idea. <laughs> you, you will look and smell like a fisherman if you buy this hat. We've got fish guts already uh, woven into it. <laughs> All I want is 10% right. of that idea, Josh. Just 10%. All right. I hear you. Keep me I in mind. Uh, Josh, I I, I'm, we're running out of time. Where can people, I know they know about you, my part of the world, they do. But if they want more information, where can they find out more about what you offer? Yeah, they can go to hookgear.com or nomadoutdoor.com. Um, that's our two websites. And if they just type in the name, um, it usually pops up on the search engine pretty quick. So um, we got, again, a lot of great retailers yeah. down in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, continue to support, support those small businesses. That's what I have to say. You know, I, I love our key, key account partners and they do a great job for us. But, you know, the independent side of the business, they, they're the ones in those communities that when things go awry, they're always there to help you out. Yeah. So, you know, small businesses are very important to the economy and to businesses like us. Amen to that. Good. Josh Reeves is the vice president of sales, co-founder of Marilina Outdoor. You know him as Hook and Nomad. It's a fantastic story. When I first heard it uh, not too long ago, I thought this guy's got to be on the show because my market eats his product up and they're going to hear this story. Josh, thank you so much. Cam, really appreciate the opportunity to speak with y'all. All right. We'll be back after this break, folks, with final comments. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Now offering the purchase of the Stella Artois Chalice, a beautiful stemmed glass with the Stella logo. The purchase of each Stella Artois Chalice provides five years of clean water for someone in one of 13 developing countries around the world. Learn more at StellaArtois.com. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. I'm Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. We help people in our community that most others have given up on. Please donate your unwanted electronics to Ransom Recycling. We teach life skills, job readiness, and job creation through our electronic recycling program. We take anything with a cord. Find us at RansomMinistries.com or you can call us at 251-751-0044. Think about your home. What do you see? Do you just see two stories or the stories of your toddler's first steps? <laughs> now think about your car. Do you see an odometer reading or your kids reading in the back seat? Other insurance companies just see a house. They just see a car. But a state farm agent sees what your home and your car really mean to you. So why not give them the protection they deserve? You can reach me, State Farm Agent Allison Horner, at allisonhorner.com. Here's what I heard from Josh. The thing that leapt out was you give the people, the teammates who you trust, the responsibility to do their job and they do their job well. He mentioned it over and over again, the words team and family. And it reminded me, I couldn't help but think about my friends, Jamie Sandifer and Mark Sawyers over at Sandifer Wealth Management and the way that they treat their clients as a, in, a, in a family atmosphere, unparalleled customer service. They treat their clients remarkably well. They want to, but it's also important to note that Jamie and Mark over at Sander for Wealth are a fiduciary. They put their clients' interests ahead of their own, a big duty, a, an obligation to preserve good faith and trust. And I think that's what we heard from Josh, uh, that we they relied on each other, that they counted on each other's expertise. And that's exactly 
what you'll find at Sandifer Wealth Management. If you're looking for more, you can find them at sandiferwealth.com or 340-1984. I like Jamie. I like Jamie Sandifer. I like Mark Sawyers. I like Josh Reed. They seem to have a lot of the same ethics. That wraps us up for this week. If you like the show, you can find it as a podcast. Send it on to your friends. John Thompson is the show's producer. He's with Eye on Digital. Tune in again next week, folks. We'll have a good show. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.